Okay, so in this video, I'm going to show you how to show an image on this OLED display, which has a resolution of 128 by 128 pixels. And the main reason for doing so is because Wokwe, which is a free online Arduino emulator, just recently added a support for this display, which means that it's now much easier to use it. Now, usually when you create a new project on Wokwe, you go to wokwe.com, then select your favorite microcontroller, in my case, it's Arduino Uno. You click this plus button and add the display, but unfortunately it's not there. You can still only see the SSD1306 display in here. So what you have to do is go to documentation, click the chips API and getting started and scroll down to the display section. And in here there is our SH1107 display and you might recognize this sketch from my older video. And that's this one titled Arduino OLED Clock Project. But if I open the old Wokwe sketch, since the display was not available at the time of recording this video, I had to use the SSD 1306 by 64 pixel resolution display, which means that I was only able to see half of the design. Again, that's not the case anymore. I can now see the whole design on this SH1107 with all the advantages, including saving the image or copying the image of the display, so you get the accurate pixel representation of the content displayed on the display. By the way, if you want to save the video from the OLED display, I have this YouTube video called Save Image from OLED Display to PC, which is of course worth checking. Anyway, let's get back to our project. So let's simplify this and just show a static full screen image. For drawing the images, I usually use Photopea, which is a free online graphic editor similar to Photoshop, and here I was trying to draw something that looks like a compass. So I'll export this as a PNG image, going to File, Export as PNG, hit the Save button, and then use the image to CPP website to convert the image into the byte array. So I'll select the image, scroll down here, I can see the preview. And the only thing that I need to do is to click the swap checkbox that's required for the UHG2 library, click the generate code and copy output. I usually copy the code right into the sketch, but this time I will make an exception and I will add a new header file by clicking this arrow and selecting new file. And let's call this compass image dot h hit the create button and paste the content in here and we don't need this help array we just need our array with the image which is called epb bitmap oled compass but before we draw this image let's simplify the main sketch and since i only want to draw the image i don't need most of the stuff so all the variables i will delete i will keep the setup and i will keep the uhg to begin function that's required but i will also delete all the helper function only keeping the main loop in there and this is actually the main loop Again, inside the main loop, I will delete most of the stuff except for the loop for drawing the UHG2 content. But inside here, I will only keep the draw XBMP function for drawing the image and delete everything else. And I'm not quite sure why this for is in here, but I will delete it as well, which will leave me with a very simple sketch. Again, I have the setup function and inside I have the UHG2 begin function to start the UHG2 library. And then inside the main loop function, I have the UHG2 drawing loop for drawing individual pages. And I will talk about it in a minute. For now, let's focus on the draw XBMP function. And I want to use this function to draw our full screen image. The image name is stored inside the compass image.h file, so we'll copy the image name, the array name, and paste it into the draw xbmp function. The position should be 0, 0, and the size of the image is 128 by 128 pixels. Now, since we want to access this image from this compass image.h file, we need to include this file into our sketch by calling include and then the name of the file, which is compass image.h. And let's restart the simulation. And hopefully, we'll see the full screen image being drawn on the display. And that seems to be the case, so it works as expected. Now, let's talk about this drawing loop. So, the display resolution is 128 by 128 pixels. So, we need 16,000 bits, or divided by 8, we need 2000 bytes or 2 kilobytes of memory to hold the buffer of the display. Unfortunately, the Arduino Uno, which is being used in this sketch, only has 2 kilobytes of RAM memory, which means that we cannot fit this. I mean, we can fit this buffer into the RAM, but that will be the only thing that could be there, and that's just simply not possible because we need other stuff in RAM as well, which means that we cannot fit this buffer into the Arduino RAM. So, what the UHG2 library can do, and that's indicated by this number 1 in here in the initialization, is it will split the drawing into individual pages and one page is 128 by 8 pixels. So if I calculate 128 by 8 pixels divided by 8, now I only need 128 bytes for the buffer, so we need much more buffer in the RAM, and it will draw this small piece of content into the buffer, then send it to the display, then clear the buffer and repeat it multiple times to update the whole display, and we can easily visualize this. If I put a delay inside this drawing loop, for example, one second, and then restart the simulation, you can see it updates first page, then it waits a second, the second page, third page, and so on and so on, so it updates all the pages, until it updates everything on the display, and then it continues like this forever, but since we are showing the same image, we don't see any difference. So this way we only need a small amount of memory, but obviously a performance is worse compared to having a full screen buffer. 
There is actually a way how to improve the performance and that is by making those pages slightly bigger and we can do this by calling the initialization and instead of typing one in here we will type in two and now if I restart the simulation you will see that those individual pages are now twice the size being 128 by 16 pixels. So this time one page is 128 by 16 pixels which means that we need 256 bytes of memory which is still pretty low compared to the full screen buffer. So I will comment out the delay and let's try this on the real Arduino. I will copy the code from the Wokvis sketch and paste it into the Arduino IDE, but keep in mind that we also have this campus image.h file which we need to include as well, so I will copy the content of this file and inside the Arduino IDE I will click this free dots button and select new tab and the name is campus image.h, click the OK button and paste the content. Now if you have never used the U8G2 library, you have to go to libraries, type in U8G2 and install the library. After that select the right Arduino board and upload this sketch to the Arduino. Now the connection between the OLED display and the Arduino should be the same as inside the Vokvis sketch, which means that the ground goes to ground and the VCC goes to 5 volts. The SCL pin, which is a serial clock, either goes to the pin A5 or a dedicated SCL pin. And the SDA, serial data, either goes to pin A4 or the dedicated SDA pin. So once I have this OLED display connected and restart the Arduino by hitting this reset button, I do see the image but it's being offset. And that's the same problem I was facing with my previous project. Now the last time I was just changing the offsets in the U8G2 library source, but I guess this time I will just try a different display initialization. And that's because if I open the U8G2 documentation and open the list of all the supported displays and here search for 128 by 128 pixels, you can see I have a few different displays using this chip and this resolution. I was using the first one, so let's try the second one which is from Pimoroni. I mean my display is not from Pimoroni, but maybe the initialization will be the same. And again I'm looking for the hardware i score c connection with number 2 inside, so I guess this might work. So I'll copy this into our Arduino sketch, comment out the previous initialization and copy this U8G to name with the rotation being R0 so I'll just replace this piece and comment out the page buffer size and upload it one more time. And that actually fixed the issue. Now we see a nice full screen image on this display and it was very simple. I really like the fact that you can use this display inside Wokvi which of course means that you will see more videos using this display very soon on this channel. If you have any specific request of what I should show on the display please let me know in the comment section. Thank you very much for watching this video and I hope to see you soon. Thanks and bye.